Ain't you no know, half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. Thank y'all to everybody who has been listening tonight. I uh, didn't give any love to our folks that are listening to us on TuneIn. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate you hitting up our website, www.legacyinternetradio.com. We appreciate you following our hashtags, Legacy Internet Radio. Special thank you to those folks that are listening to the replays right now on YouTube and podcasts because y'all come check us out every single week is why we keep coming back and doing it for y'all every single week. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio sponsored by Live Action Captions, Free Spirit Enterprises, as well as Joseph Lewis Insurance. All right. This next story I want to get into, Grizz. I need you to behave yourself on this one, man. You know how you do. I already see you right now. You're already getting all ready to go in. Uh, hey, um, did what's the name of them get at you the other day? Who the? These nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. I had to do it. These nuts is running for president. What album was that? The Chronic? That's The Chronic. Yeah. But seriously, These Nuts is running for president. Uh, third party candidate for Not president. Not yours. Huh? Not mine, but these. These nuts. <laughs> this is uh, it's a serious situation. I'm not clowning. I'm not acting up. I served it up for him. He knew where I was going. He gave it right back to me. That's my brother. But the truth of the matter is, there is a third party candidate who is running for the president of the United States of America in the 2016 election who garnered 9% of the vote <laughs> in a recent poll in the state of North Carolina. And the candidate's name on the ballot is these nuts. You cannot make this up. These nuts is actually you know a brother had to come. These up. nuts is actually a 15-year-old boy from Iowa who goes by oh, the name no of brother. Brady Olson. Brady Olson from Iowa. Uh, he's putting up some of the best third-party candidate numbers in two decades. <laughs> Never mind the fact that he's 20 years too young to even to run vote. for no to run to run you know for president. Uh, Olson told the Time Magazine, I'm getting this from Time Magazine, by the way, uh, in an email that it's no secret in his hometown that he's the man behind these nuts. Quote, my <laughs> school on, say that has again. been, it is not a secret. It, the, the homies know that he is these nuts. Uh, <laughs> my school has been contacted by the media so they know. My family and friends are taking this well and they support me fully. Olson said that he decided to run because he's frustrated with the two-party system and the viral momentum of these nuts Say seem word. to show that America <laughs> is with them. According to Olson, he's been contacted by people in 23 states who want to help with his, con, uh, with his campaign. I agree you up first. Keep it clean. He might win. <laughs> you know, what is got this the, campaign, he, really? He got the thought votes, that's for sure. <laughs> these nuts. I mean, I mean, just he's nine? How old is oh, he? 15? 15? But he's from Iowa, so he's a, mil a Midwest, you know, Caucasian. He ain't no brother, as I thought. That lets you know how far hip-hop has reached into the country. But, oh, man, that's, I mean, genius job. He know more about civics than the average 15-year-old. I know that for sure, how to get on a ballot. But what I'm more curious about is what in the hell is wrong with North Carolinians? Maybe they know something we don't know. They smoking that ooh -wee. Is it legal down there? They just said, no, okay, okay. we're going to put these nuts, and they voted for them. Would you vote for these nuts? I think it is <laughs> I can literally a, say that a as a joke. question. That's what I think. It's a joke. It's not a, that's a um, legit question. Would you literally vote for these nuts? No, but what <laughs> I'm saying is I think these nuts supporters are yeah. being funny. <laughs> you know? I, I will tell you right now. If it's Hillary, Jeb, or Joe Biden, and these nuts is on you the ticket, for I'm nuts. voting for these nuts because they mine, baby. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, listen. For those folks who think that it's not real, take out the local ABC affiliate who is actually telling the story. Listen. North Carolina shows Donald Trump leading Hillary Clinton in a possible presidential matchup, but that's not the part that's grabbing people's attention today. It is the third party candidate on that poll, a candidate named Dee's Nuts. Oh, no. Really? A candidate registered as an independent from Iowa has the legal name of Dee's Nuts. No. Public policy polling showed him pulling 9% of the vote in North Carolina. North Carolina shows Donald Trump leading Hillary Clinton in a possible presidential matchup, but that's not the part that's grabbing people. 
Yo, I, <laughs> I, it, I mean, because you know, people thought that I was in here wilding. No, so. just to hear the, the anchor man say these nuts. Yeah, but you see, but you see his face, <laughs> like he's looking like I can't believe they got me reading this copy right now. Man, say these nuts, uh, man. Oh you know it's the yo. This is this is yeah. All right. What's the movie? Uh, Full Metal Jacket. Say it like you got a pair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for those folks. Actually, I was going to say I'm sorry for those gun. folks that's offended, but I, no, I'm not. <laughs> I Charisma can't, can't get I, with I, it because she don't have these nuts. No, 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 yeah. no. That's not why she can't get with it. She can't get with we it. We saw it's not a latest she, world. She, she, Charisma. she can't get with it we because so she she can't get <laughs> with it because she's looking like did they really really. <laughs> do this like because yeah, that was really my reason put it on the ballot yeah because right. that was my response until i actually saw a copy of the actual application that was put together by i guess it was brady at the time when i first saw the story i didn't know that it was a 15 year old kid i just saw what i just played for well, y'all wouldn't his age disqualify him you don't have to put none of that stuff on there for the ballot you don't have to put none of that stuff on these nuts the ain't got no age on it <laughs> okay. you, you don't have to you don't have to put none of that stuff on the ballot you can just fill out an application, which was part of the reason why he did it, to show people how flawed the system is. Right. I thought it was brilliant. And guess who endorsed him? You will never guess who, who endorsed him. Dr. Dre. Warren G. Warren G. That's right. <laughs> he was the one that said D. He was the one who said, hey, uh, there was a name of them get at you the other day. <laughs> who? who that? These nuts. There you go. Ain't no how to step it with Marcus. Yeah, that's, a, that, 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 that's enough. That's enough for that. All right. Um, this next thing I want to get to, uh, we're going to have a little fun with some religion. Uh, Grizz, you and I and a couple of our friends did a show on religion about a year and a half, about a year ago, a right. little over a year ago. Matter of fact, it was in our first year at Legacy on the Radio, so it's about two years ago. And we talked about all religions, Judaism, uh, uh Christianity, uh, Islam, all of those, and one thing that we didn't spend a lot of time on at the t a lot of time on at the time was evangelicals and televangelicals and how they go about making their money. People like Creflo Dollar asking for you know money to buy his planes and things of that sort. So what I want to do, I want to play this clip. I've been playing a lot of clips tonight, but you know, you understand why when you hear it. We'll play this clip and then Diva and Grizzy and yours truly, we are going to talk to you tonight about televangelicals, tele televan I'm sorry, televangelists and the fact that we should probably figure out another way to have some religion on television. Take a listen to this and then stay with us. We're going to come back in a minute. Churches, uh, America's favorite place for redemption and sixth favorite place for chicken. <laughs> churches are a cornerstone of American life. There are roughly 350,000 congregations in the United States, and many of them do great work, feeding the hungry, clothing the poor. But this is not a story about them. This is about the churches who exploit people's faith for monetary gain. And when I say that, you probably think of 1980s televangelists like this guy. I'm just getting into a prophetic vein. Mama moko solo do basata. Man da de king di din de bebo. Someone with a digestive tract problems. Quickly call. Man da de bakasata. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because of growth cells that stop. Man da de basata. I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> please, please. You can't say I don't make this stuff up. Just five seconds after you said the words manda kasabasanda. <laughs> That man is Robert Tilton, and though he, like many televangelists, was caught up uh, in an expose decades ago, he never really went away. Healing, go into those knees. Arthritis, go in the name of Jesus. Tumors, go in the name of Jesus. That one calling with lupus. Lupus, you foul devil. You bow to the name of Jesus. Lupus, you bow to the name of Jesus. You go in Jesus' name. Lupus, you complicated and not especially easy to describe malady. You go, Lupus. You vex us with your foul lupusness. You go. Now, though you may not be aware of it, televangelism is still thriving in this country, and Robert Tilton is just a very small part of it. There are several large media networks devoted to televangelism, including Trinity, Inspiration Ministries, and Daystar. And the preachers that appear on them can have incredible lifestyles. Just earlier this year, a man named Creflo Dollar got people's attention with a bold request. 
Pastor Creflo Dollar of the World Changers Church International facing harsh criticism after starting a fundraising campaign to buy this $65 million luxury private jet. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. <laughs> You cannot stop me from dreaming is not how you ask for $65 million. It's what you scream at your father when he tells you you'll never be a Broadway dancer. I can do it, Dad! I've got the music in me! <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Creflo Dollar wanting a private jet is not remotely unusual. There is a pattern of preachers wanting high-end airplanes. And when they get them, they're not always particularly humble about it. I had enough money to buy a beautiful Cessna Citation jet, cash. And since there's so much jealousy in this room tonight that I can feel over this. A few weeks later, I bought another one worth three times what that one was, cash. Act happy over my blessing, folks. Ooh. I bought a jet cash, I bought a bigger jet cash, f the haters, act happy for me. That's, that's not a sermon, it's the first draft of a Rick Ross single. <laughs> now, now, preachers claim these planes are vital tools. Look at Kenneth Copeland, who along with his wife Gloria, are among the most successful TV evangelists. A few years back, he asked his followers to help buy a $20 million jet, promising it would only be used for church business. But a local news crew did some digging, and what they found will probably not surprise you. It was a News 8 investigation last February which first raised questions about Copeland's apparently personal use of his new church jet. This is a preaching machine. Most notably for a ski trip to Colorado and visits to an exotic game ranch in South Texas. Here's Copeland and his son John proudly posing with a pair of Axis deer indigenous to India and Sri Lanka. Holy shit! This guy's like a psychotic reverse Noah. Two by two, male and female, came to Kenneth Copeland and he doth shot them right between the f***ing eyes. <laughs> now, Copeland's ministry will tell you that he reimburses the church for trips like that, but that still means he has private jet reimbursement money. And yet, despite that personal wealth, people still send Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, and that arsehole with two planes. Lots and lots of money. And that's partly because they preach something called the prosperity gospel, which argues that wealth is a sign of God's favor, and donations will result in wealth coming back to you. Th that idea sometimes takes the form of seed faith, the notion that donations are seeds that you will one day get to harvest. Uh, let me show you that in action. The size of your seed will determine the size of your harvest. I don't understand why, but there's something happens at a level where people step into faith and give $1,000 that don't happen at other levels. You're going to have a breakthrough through this $273 seed. All you've got is $1,000. Listen, that's not enough money anyway to buy the house. You're trying to get in the apartment. You're trying to buy the house. That's not enough money anyway. You get to that phone and you put that seed in the ground and watch God work it out. The, the, the argument is, sow your money in the ground and you will reap returns multiple times over. Except, as an investment, you'd be better off burying your money in the actual ground. Because at least that way there is a chance your dog may dig it up and give it back to you one day. Good boy. But... But it can get even more predatory, because if, say, you don't have $1,000 or perhaps have significant credit card debts, Seed Faith can still work for you. I have a feeling that somebody that wants a credit card debt wiped out, that if you'll use your faith as you sow, as you sow the 1000 on a credit card, as you use your faith, as you use your faith, God's going to wipe out your credit card indebtedness. Think about that. That is the equivalent of saying the key to you losing weight lies at the bottom of this giant Costco bulk bag of peanut butter M&Ms. Go find it. It's definitely down there. And all of this, all of this would be amusing if the targets of these messages were not often vulnerable people like Bonnie Parker. She did not seek medical treatment for cancer instead choosing to sow money into Kenneth Copeland's church. And I'll let her daughter pick it up from there. I started finding notebooks. Not long after she passed away, she believed, and I know she believed, because it's in the notebooks, 
that if she sowed enough seed, which was money, um, the, the greater amount of seed that you sow, according to them, um, the better chance you have, the better chance you have of getting healed. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live in the Den, Legacy Internet Radio. All right, it's a, it's a, it's a whole lot to respond to there. Uh, as I mentioned to you guys before, you know, we did a whole show on religion uh, about mm -hmm. a, about two years ago. We spent four hours talking about it. Grizz, you were there uh, and you had your opinions about it then. I'm going to give you the opportunity to speak first. Now, we're talking about evangelists. Uh, one thing that we didn't get to, that's a 20-minute clip. We played seven minutes. There's no way I'm going to play the whole 20 minutes. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention, I got that story from my brother Big Rube, by the way, uh, who will be rejoining Ain't No Half Step on Marcus J in the next few weeks. But that story, as you can see, I'm stumbling through my words there because I'm feeling some kind of way. Why they're giving you, you a in? different. They're giving jump, you a whole. Yeah, you go first, man. First thing, all things are possible through Christ. I will, I will put you that. Put it, put it out there. Second, though, these people are just raping. It, it was, <laughs> we were talking about rape earlier, but this is a different kind of rape. Like, it's just a bad representation of the gospel. You know, like you have bad representations of any word, of any faith. You know, you got extremism on every level. You got, you know, poachers on this level. Even Buddhists got extremism where they set themselves on fire. Who are we to judge what they're supposed to set themselves on fire for? It's not my religion, you know, my particular faith. But these are extremes of the Christian faith. And I just want everybody to know that. You know, God loves you if you don't have 10% to tithe. He's still going to love you because he's all powerful, all knowing. He's not the big spook in the sky. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. But we're not going. I'm not going. What's the word I want to use for prophesizing? Yeah. Prophesize. Yeah, I'm not prophesizing. Look, Mark, Mark is giving me the gas face already. But <laughs> this is just ridiculous. I mean, you can't. I mean, and John Oliver puts it out there uh, very uh, plainly. He, he, he uses the comic. Um, the comic uh, expression of the extremes where he just literally lets the people stick their foot in their mouth. And As a comic, how you feel about the way he presented it? Oh, it's genius. You know, because really you don't have to do the work. You just let the people just, you know, let the, uh, let the televangelists go ahead and say it themselves. Like, I think one of them said, if you don't uh, put a thousand dollars on your credit card just go into debt or if you don't put a thousand on you ain't got a thousand dollars for your house that's a house note right, right. <laughs> you know go ahead and take your house note and give it to me you know so and then Creflo Dollar talk about uh, he needs a plane and then the other guy saying that why this is a plane why can't he ask for a plane huh why can't he ask for a plane I mean he that's can ask for one well, that's what he said why yeah he can ask for, for one but it doesn't matter what I mean it's been going on forever and time and infinitum so this is just stupid Diva, charisma David what you think yeah I I'm a spiritual person I believe in God I believe in the Holy Spirit Amen. but what I don't believe in is taking advantage of people because you have an influence over them and I think that people who want to sow a seed, so to speak, are more likely to get back their return from giving to people in need, not from giving to Money. this rich person who already has a private jet and a fancy car and a fancy house. That's not how you sow your seed. So it's the, in, 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 in essence, it's called paying it forward. You right. know? Paying but it. you don't have to pay it forward literally. You could pay it forward in a lot of different ways. Well, I mean, here's the way I look at it, man. It's, 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 I, I'm already a religious cynic. You know, Why? because I don't subscribe to religion because I think religion has been I think spirituality and religion are cousins. I, I really do. Yeah. I think that you can't have one without the, other. without the other, you know, but at the same time, I think that with religion, there's so many rules and regulations. They can be twisted yeah. and they can be, you know, bastardized to make people believe pretty much anything when you can tell a person that jesus came from jerusalem and we can tell a person that jerusalem is in israel and you can tell a person that israel is in the middle east and you know what the middle east looks like you know where those people you know where it is and what those people look like but then you see you know caesar borgia as jesus you know what i mean like how the hell did that happen you know and this is this is the the the, the problem with faith this is the problem with just going with what someone tells you 
without having the own, ex, you know, the experience for yourself. I, me personally, I'm a spiritual person. I have my own relationship with the creator that's not governed by somebody's rules and regulations called religion. Because I think that if you get so caught up in something like a religion where a person can get in a pulpit and quote a scripture and all that kind of stuff and get you to give them all your, house your money <laughs> and you don't go to the doctor and you end up dying from, from cancer, cancer because you gave so much credence to the the charisma of the and no disrespect to you I mean charisma in the other sense of the word there's so much charisma from the individual person standing in the pulpit giving you all of this kind of stuff you know it was not that kind of thing that led me away from religion I was never comfortable for it with it I went to church every week because my mama said I had to but I was never comfortable there thank you mama I, Jay. I, I always went because I was told that's what you did and the older I get, the more questions that I had, the less questions that were answered to my satisfaction. That's what led me away. But when I see stuff like this, th it tells me I made the right decision. It tells me that when Just I sit down, it, it tells me when I sit down at night or in the morning, and I have a conversation with the creator. It tells me if I said something crazy or I did something crazy and then my neck hurts. There's my set. There's my message right there. I ain't got to go. <laughs> right. You're right. You're right. I ain't got to go and, and sit in a, in a pulpit. In a, in a church and listen to a guy in a pulpit teach me about something you know like this and tell me you know I gotta give you so much money so yes. that I can get a blessing that's outrageous what we call it's it absolutely for what it is. outrageous now that's not to cast aspersions on legitimate pastors and, and ministers and preachers because they exist as well I realize they do I know they do. I know okay. some of them personally. Yep. I came up with some. I met some as an adult. And I look up to some, you know, as my mentors even now. But my relationship with them has nothing to do with my relationship with the universe with and the creator. creator. Because that's completely separate. And the piece that this article, and thank you that, you know, for John Oliver and, and HBO for allowing us to play that clip, but the piece that we didn't get to is there are people who are doing this without having to pay no taxes, Action. without doing anything. So basically, they can go up there and they can get people to give them all the money they want, and there's no accounting of where that money is going, what's, what it's going well, the for, court, the church clerk none of that kind of that. stuff. But the truth is, the church clerk is going to make sure that that money goes just like Jared Fogle for for for, for right. The church you know, clerk for, for, usually hanging out for with Subway. the pastor. You know where, where's that in money? Where's that money going? True. I mean, uh, these major these, these major these major televangel tele television churches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about some of the, let's take Atlanta for example. Mm. Creflo Dollars based out of Atlanta. Creflo. Uh, uh, Bishop Eddie Long's based out of Atlanta, mm. and I would be very, very curious to know what the neighborhoods around those churches look. That like. is a great point. I mean, they don't get. I saw some meme the other day where it says, you know, uh, black churches make over twelve billion dollars a year, but the communities look like crap. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, we all, we all know. Sure. I mean, honestly, if we we grew, everybody in here grew up in the hood. Everybody knows the corner church, the neighborhood church, the community church, the big church, the little church. Everybody knows the churches we go to. We know the ones that pretty much, I can't think of not too many churches when I was coming up, that the pastor, like the pastor would come into the barbershop, pastor tried to holler at my sister. <laughs> I was like, you know, we, we, we know all men are fallible. All men are fallible. And you said a good thing. I think, um, Mark, everybody, God is within everybody. Your creator is within a charisma. I'm about to call you your other name. <laughs> is in I Marcus so J, is in J Grizzly, and he's he's all righteous. So if your spirit, if you if you have a righteous spirit, and you see something that ain't right, your righteous spirit gonna have you call it out and be like, oh, "That's some bull." You can say as you said, as bullshit. As, Thank you. You know that's some mm. bullshit that these guys are out here preaching, and it feels I feel I feel bad on a humanistic level because there's people out here that will take advantage of the weak-minded the feeble-minded the people are not educated enough or not willing or not strong enough to think freely and seek god on their own that 
Go ahead. I was going to add, and some of them, you know, are very strong mentally and physically. Oh, but yeah. But maybe they're going through something emotionally in Trauma their life. Trauma does it. Yeah, and, and you know, if your house just burned down and you have this pastor tell you, I can get you your house back. I can get yeah. you just a car. A I can get card. you a new job if you only put Too this gone. down. But Too you know what's though. crazy yeah. about that? You know what's sad? It's like, you know, like a doctor, they tell you, don't promise, don't overpromise, or, you know, True a police that. officer. So who's investigating, you know, a, a tragedy high, in the don't family? Don't promise anything. You know what I mean? And you can't, you just can't promise people things of that sort. You know, and I tell you, you know, we're gonna. I'll make this last statement on this. We're gonna move on to the last story before we move on to our diva diaries in the next segment. But one of the things that I tell you that annoys me more than anything else is, as a very, very proud, chest out agnostic, someone who acknowledges the creator and is a very spiritual person who just personally rejects religion i find it outrageous that christians and jewish people mostly christians i'll be honest with you it's mostly christians but jewish people and, and muslims want to look at someone like me like i'm wrong and i you know i've had these debates i'm not complaining i'm not you know, saying that they shouldn't have their opinions, but when people speak the way I speak and people who speak like me, we automatically are wrong and we get that condescending, I'm going to pray for you. Go ahead and pray for me. I never said I don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all good. <laughs> you know, and the thought that your way is the only way to me is pretty arrogant and it's pretty outrageous. And I think that mind control it's pretty difficult for me to swallow because no God creator that I've ever studied is vengeful and vindictive and would punish you because you choose to use your brain. And so Amen. if that's how you want to be, then so be it. And if I'm going to take it to a black power level, real talk, this ain't what we did when we was in Africa. It's just not. Right. If you study yeah, Africa, a lot of gods. if you study Africa and you study African religions, you know, there were some Christians there, but for the most part, that's not what we did. For the most part, the area of Africa that we were taken from is not an area of Africa that was very, very pronounced in Christianity. And so you can come at me all you want, but you got to also remember that when you was a slave, you couldn't do nothing except for pray to God. The same God the slave master was praying to. So while you was out there in the field, hot as hell, drop, dropping dead, I you was know, my praying, family wasn't praying, in the praying, field. Praying, praying for God to, to give you salvation. Massa was praying for a great crop that, that, yes, that season. Was. And you know how stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy and that radio. Last thing I want to get to and get back to Alabama Grizz. Donald Trump, I'm getting this from rawstory.com. Donald Trump had a rally in Alabama. It was so big that they had to move it twice to two different locations. One of the things that I want to get to in this rally, actually a couple of things I want to get to in this rally, is at the rally these people were beginning to chant white power. White power, white power. At you a got Donald it on Trump, video? At a Donald Trump rally. It's, it's, it's here. Donald Trump mm. rally. You can look at it. Uh, the next thing is a lot of it had to do with immigration because we know that immigration is the biggest thing that's, you know, giving him, you know, a large a boost boost. And, you know, to the point where, you know, you got an Iowa talk show host. And I wanted to get to the story, but we ran out of time. This dude is suggesting that people who are coming across the border get captured and then turned back into slavery. <laughs> that, that That's crazy. What? But. Uh, <laughs> you got a dude that was interviewed uh, amongst the others that were screaming white power. Uh, this guy says, hopefully, uh, he says when he becomes president, he's talking about Donald Trump. Uh, when he becomes president, what we're going to do is make a border a vacation spot. It's going to cost you $25 for a permit, and then you get $50 for every confirmed kill. That would be a nice thing. Then he comes back and says that he was joking. But I don't know that you want to really, really be joking about something like that. Another thing, another thing, a uh, 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 quote that came out of this uh, sarcastic statement, of course, that came from another person who was there at the rally that they interviewed, a local farmer saying, quote, you probably think we're prejudiced, but the whole life, but this whole life we had N-words working for us in the field and they were N-words. My daddy called them N-words. I'm not ignorant. That's just the way I was raised. There's black people and then there's N-words. You live around here, you know the difference. 
end quote. So mm. I wanted to bring that up because Donald Trump, we know, is gaining a whole lot of support from people across the country. But I don't see anywhere in that article that says that he denounced any of that kind of behavior. He may not have heard those specific quotes from those people who were there, but he certainly heard the people out there chanting white power, white power, white power. So, Dave, I want you up first. When you hear something like that, you get in your feelings? Or am I being a little bit too sensitive? I'm just not surprised at all. I mean, look at what Donald Trump's, Trump stands for and what he always, you know, talks about. Yeah, he might talk about immigration against uh, Mexican immigrants, but um, you you know, you just know how he thinks, and it's not for us minorities. So um, I'm not surprised at all that he let that go. And, you know, he's not going to chant it himself, but he's going to let them chant it for him type of thing. You know, so I, I'm not surprised. You think Donald Trump would be somebody that would chant white power? Probably not smart for him, you know, because how are you going to get those other votes? The same people that voted for Barack Obama. Are they going to vote for someone who's chanting white power? Right. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, you know, we know that there was the black power movement. Is there a mm -hmm. difference between chanting black power, black power versus <coughs> chanting white power, white power? It's a big difference. It's just like the all lives matter versus the black lives matter. We have to chant that because we're the underdog. We're the ones that are fighting for what we should be getting, you know, righteously. We, well, should, we should automatically get what they get, but we don't. So we have to have uh, the black power movement. So well, we, is, that we, where, is that where, you know, you hear statements like we, we have to take our country back when you hear we want to take our country back? I mean, is that kind of the same deal? You know, I mean, when you hear, you know, someone who is saying those kinds of things and then in the next breath they say we want to take they our country the back. They have the country. They don't need to take it back. They already have the supreme power over this country. We're just trying to fight for what we can get a piece of it. You know what I'm saying? So they don't need to say that. They don't need to say, um, you know, we need our country back. I was about to, <laughs> good segue. I was about to say, well, what if we get to the mountaintop, so to speak, people of color? And, and take over? And take over. Oh, I mean, take over is such a strong word, but become the people of power, uh, so to speak. Uh, and then white folk go and say the same thing. White, I mean, it'd be so fit. It'd be the bizarre world of American well, it was politics. like the movie Face Off or something yeah. like that. Check this out. Mm -hmm. You agree with me? Yes, yeah, see it, because I can see it. Anybody with a sign that big has to agree. So, so. What? White power. Word. You, you heard it, Chris. That was, a, that was 2000 and, uh that 2008 was, with uh, Sarah Palin and uh, John McCain, and guess what? John, you know, John McCain did. He came out and said, "No, nope, no." Nope, yep, he that, sure did. That I don't. That's not what this is all about. Yep, he didn't do that though. Mm -hmm. No, he, he sure didn't do didn't. that. Now I will say, maybe he didn't hear it. I don't know, but I can tell you this: I'm, I, I, I strongly believe that <laughs> Donald Trump is a plant of either Hillary Clinton. Or the, or, or the Democratic Party. There is no way on God's green earth that this man, and maybe I'm just cynical, but this man could actually run. It. Well, I take that back. Y'all are dumb enough. And I, I know y'all don't want to use that word, but y'all are dumb enough. To, he's dumb enough. He did, people are dumb enough to get 25%. Because they can say we vote indiscriminately dumb because we vote for the Democrats all the time. So why can't we say it? Twenty five percent of the Republican Party are dumb enough to vote for a rich ass billionaire that has none of y'all interests at heart and just playing on y'all fears and will keep you under his thumb or under the the uh, the economic type of capitalism thumb that y'all want to believe here's in. The so part yeah, that I, here's the part that I don't understand. You know, we live in Virginia where a lot of it is rural and poor and a lot of those white folks vote Republican and I just don't understand it. I don't understand why they would want to vote Democrat either. You know, I think a lot of times people hear me speak and they think that I'm a Democrat because of the things that I say. No, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican because I think they're both full of shit. I think that they're both you know, squeeze in the middle, and I think they're more in cahoots with each other than you may think. Uh, but I tell you the part about all of this that really, really shocks me is the fact that we live in a country where Bernie Madoff 
can rob the one percent and end up in prison but wall street was robbing the 99 percent, and nobody ever paid for any of that kind of stuff we nobody. live in a country where the richer you are the more benefits that you get and you got a whole country full of middle class and poor people fighting over which rich person they're going to have to represent mm -hmm. them in the world. How crazy is yeah. that? I'm how crazy? For these nuts. How crazy <laughs> is that? Mm -hmm. That we, as a people, have not figured out how to circumvent that bullshit and actually have a person who is not a billionaire rich person. I can now we just Seriously. had one, or we have one now who they loved when they elected him. But I think his skin color got in the way in a big right. in, in, in a large way. And you'll have a lot of people, again, not keeping it 100, who won't admit that a big part of the reason why they don't like him is because he's a black dude. And that's cool. That's fine if that's the reason. Just don't freaking be a punk about it, because there's plenty of stuff about Barack Hussein Obama as a president that you can nitpick and have that be the real reason why you don't like him. There's a lot of stuff he's done that's been pretty dumb, in my personal opinion. Has he been a bad president? No. You know, I think he's been a, a, a fairly decent president, but he's done some bonehead stuff. And so you ain't got to be, you ain't got to be fake about it. Just keep it 100. So <laughs> it, it's, it's, all, it's all good. Ain't no hat step with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. I, I'm going to go ahead and step off my soapbox so we can have some fun. We got the dating pool diva up in this joint, and it's time for us to do what we had her come here to no do and that is the d uh, the d we're gonna take a break that's okay. the diva diary we're gonna take a break and when we come back we're gonna play her song so she can do her little awkward dance that she like to do that awkward. always that I always pick it on ain't her. It's, salsa? it's trendy yeah, okay. it's trendy i pick on her about it every what's single trendy? week and whatnot but it is okay. what it is marcus jj grizzy yeah what's up as well as the dating pool diva ain't no ass step on marcus j live from the den legacy in that radio we're gonna take a break when we come back we got the dating pool diva did 